Keith Hilson with the Schmidt Music Trombone Shop back with another instrument review for you. And today I've got an instrument that I've been paying attention to for a lot of years and I'm super excited to finally be able to have in our shop. So I remember it was probably over a decade ago, I started hearing rumors, little things about this trombone player down in Texas who was starting to do some work with carbon fiber hand slides. Now I'd seen a little bit of work with this. I've seen a couple of individuals who had done stuff. There was a Swiss maker by the name of DeCarbo who had done a little bit of carbon fiber work but I was really interested to see kind of over the years where this was going to develop and of course we know that that person was David Butler and where things have evolved over the past decade where we're at now where Butler trombones are truly a force in the trombone world is such a very cool thing and like I said I'm very excited to be able to have these in the shop here so Today, obviously, he's got a whole range of different models from small bore tenor, large bore tenor, medium bore, if you want that, up to bass trombone. Um, we have in today one of his small bore tenors, specifically his JJ model here. So I'm going to, of course, talk all about this horn here, talk about my experience with it, but I'm going to play for you first. I'm going to be playing all of this today on my S.E. Shire's Michael Davis Plus mouthpiece. <laughs> Trombones have truly become a force in 
the trombone world over the past handful of years. Um, and what's been really exciting is to see the development from their hand slide, which alone by themselves were just incredible development in the concept that Dave is, is and his team are actually able to build the hand slides to fit your particular instrument. It's such a cool innovation. But then to see the, the development in to the trombones as well. You know, obviously he started off with the small board tenors. He's moved into medium large board tenors, bass trombones, you know, with F attachments or FG flat attachments and all of the different attributes that these unique instruments bring to the table with their carbon fiber design. I think it's such a very cool thing. We could talk for, I mean, literally hours about all of the developments and all the different options and everything that David and his team have brought to the table here. But today I really want to focus on one of his staple horns, one of the horns that really put, I think, Butler trombones on the map, specifically the JJ model. So this was designed after JJ's classic horns, whether we're talking he played his King 3B forever or even when he moved to Yamaha, etc. JJ was all was primarily a 508 player. So the JJ is a 508 bore hand slide a uh, eight inch bell in I kind of like I really I think kind of a classic king bell taper here uh, modular bell design which we'll talk about in a second here um, and obviously I say kind of medium with hand slide and obviously with the exception of the braces here um, the cork barrels and the braces here and then obviously the you know chrome plated nickel silver inner hand slide everything else is carbon fiber so what does that mean in case you're not overly familiar with the concept of carbon fiber what that does for instruments carbon fiber of course is an exceptionally light and strong durable material um, and what we found makers like david butler like de carbo like others have found is that if you build them right they mimic so many of the properties of brass of metal which it, it seems completely ridiculous but it really does work in a lot of cases. So what are the advantages of carbon fiber? Well, I mentioned right off the bat weight. So the JJ comes in at a pound and a half. It is ridiculously light. And what I love about it, even though it's really light, it's still very, very well balanced. You know, one of the things I run into with all small bore tenors is that they do tend to be a little bit bell heavy. I mean, this is still certainly the case, but the thing is, even if it is a little bit bell heavy, well, that's all in relation, right? And so for me, you know, sitting and holding it, it, it is almost feather light. So you have the overall weight of the instrument that's really beneficial, one where David started in building his carbon fiber outer hand slides. Again, for a lot of trombone players, one of the holy grails has been the lightest possible hand slide. Um, you know, that obviously is going to give us very different, you know, overall slide control technique here. But by making the outer hand slide lighter as well, obviously we're changing up some of the tonal characteristics as well. Um, this is why we see a lot of players who like um, nickel silver outer hand slides. Part of it is the overall weight of the slide, but there, are, again, there are response sound differences as well. So... With all that in consideration, what does the carbon fiber actually do to the sound, to the response? So, in general, I find the way I kind of equate you know, carbon fiber is it's like nickel silver light. And what I mean by that is, for me, nickel silver um, gives a certain kind of depth and darkness. A lot of people think of nickel, nickel silver as making the sound brighter. I don't really think so. What I tend to find nickel silver does is it gives a little bit different core to the sound and it helps to focus the sound a little bit, but not necessarily make it brighter, edgier, right? Um, it gives us a little bit more projection. We can push the sound a little bit further, but you know, the thing with nickel silver is depending on the weight of it, because it is such a denser, harder material, it can be a little bit more to push around, right? So what the carbon fiber does, in a lot of ways, I think the timbre gives us a lot of those similar characteristics with it, where I think it does, it, it's not a, necessarily a light sound, I don't think. It has a certain depth of to the sound, um, you know, and a really, really nice balanced sound. Um, but what it does is I think we see, at least for me on the JJ, I found some really interesting shifts in the timbre as I moved through the dynamics. Um, at softer dynamics, I described, I think I even described to David um, as the sound being very, very, very warm, plush, right? It does feel like, and, and it's, it's still resonant. And that's one of the things that took me a little bit to learn. And a lot of people talk about this with carbon fiber is it's, it's like it takes you a little bit to learn how to get the instrument to resonate. But when you do, it comes to life in your hand. There's 
there's no question about that at all. And at the softer dynamics, again, there's this beautiful warm plushness to the sound. It's a, to me, it's a little bit softer around the outside of the sound, but it's not like if we were talking like really copper heavy materials where a lot of times the response is really, really slowed and dulled and it can get really, really floofy in the kind of the initial attack. I don't think that's the case at all. I still feel like there's really good articulation. I feel like the clarity in the response is there in the sound in a lot of cases, but it's just a overall warmer sound with just a little bit of that softness, plushness around the edge of the sound. But what I really love with carbon fiber is when you start to push the dynamic, you do get a little bit of a timbre change. And it's not crazy. It's not like we're going from extremely dark to really, really focused and bright and edgy and strident, but there is a little bit of a shift where all of a sudden you kind of, you hit a point there and we do, for me, I lose on the JJ, I lose a little bit of that plushness, but I get like this really beautiful clarity and the stability in the sound. And that's one of the things with carbon fiber I think is really interesting is that for me, there is not a breaking point in the upper dynamics. I can push these horns as far as possible. When I was going through and putting this horn through its paces, I was literally making myself dizzy with how loud I was playing the horn could take even more. It's a really, really interesting property. And again, what's really cool about that is that even while you're really, really pushing the dynamic, it never gets super edgy, barky, like that, that, that breaking point, right? Where the sound just splits. For me, the carbon fiber never gets there. So it's an instrument with some really, really interesting tonal properties. And obviously, and then again, we've got the response. Overall, the responsiveness of the instrument is beautiful. I think everything locks in really well. The, for me, the slotting from, you know, different partials, it, it's soft, but it feels really flexible. So it's one of those instruments I talk about. Some instruments feel like they are like, you have to move a little bit further between the partials, but when you get there, it really clicks in and you have other instruments where that movement, they, the partials maybe feel a little bit closer. It's a little bit smoother um, in between them. It doesn't maybe click the quite the same way, but you get this beautiful flexibility. For me, this falls on that spectrum where I feel like I have really, really great range access. The transition between the partials is just you know beautifully controlled and smooth. It doesn't always like get that real hard click in place there. But in a lot of cases for me, again, for me on a small board tenor, that's not something I necessarily want. I want to have more flexibility in a lot of cases, you know, with it. Um, and again, the articulation, I thought really great. I could get, you know, really beautiful um, legato, you know, soft articulation, but I could still get some really great, uh, you know, front on the, you know, harder articulations as well. And I think overall, again, just the, the control, and for me, what I love about it is, again, that, that shift in the timbre, I think, is really interesting. Not everybody wants that. Some people want a sound that's incredibly consistent all the way through. For me, I like to have a little bit of a color change because that gives me a little bit wider color palette to play with. And I think this does some really interesting things. You're not getting like this huge shift in like, you know, upper overtones versus lower overtones, but you are getting a little bit of a shift in the, you know, some of the outside of the sound, some of the, some of the clarity. And it gives you, again, so I think some tonal, you know, variations that I think are really, really interesting and unique. And again, we go back to the fact that, you know, you have the overall weight of the instrument, um, the portability of it. Obviously we've seen a, you know, a lot of folks, this has been a, a, a literal lifesaver for a lot of you know, older players who we understand the challenges of small bore tenors, let alone large bore bass trombones, just the physical size and weight of them. Having an instrument like this, where we're just cutting down so much on the weight, but we're getting so much of the playability of the control, the experience that we're looking for as trombone players, it's a really, really crazy thing. So I'm super excited that we have this horn in the shop here. I'm glad to be able to share it with you if you've had any experience with the Butler JJ model or his Lemon Drop model or any of his other horns, hand slides, I'd love to hear about experience. Leave those in the comments, share with our community. If you like this video, consider giving it a thumbs up. If you haven't already done so, think about subscribing to our channel so you can see more videos like this that are hopefully interesting to you. And of course, you can find the Trombone Shop on Facebook and Instagram. As always, thanks for watching. <laughs>